scare me sometimes. Y'all really do. I'm dressed like this. An oversized shirt. Hat. Shorts. Niggas are still hollering. Like, what's good with y'all? Yo, it just happened. Like, I'm scared. Of I'm not even showing my body. Nothing. And it's I'm get, the, the way I'm getting cat cold is insane. Like, why am I getting more guys trying to talk to me and approach me just like this? Then I do when I'm actually, like, done up. And, like, what? At this point, it's like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. You are literally upset because dudes are trying to talk to you in your natural state. No makeup, no tight clothes, natural beauty. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Is this like reverse psychology? Like, are you low-key flexing? Or do you really mean this shit? Because I would think that you would take it as a compliment that men are really trying to talk to you without no makeup. I'm not a big fan of makeup. I'm one of those guys that I can appreciate natural beauty. Plus, I live in Atlanta. Optimus Prime and Megatron stay at the Mac store. For me, makeup is the ultimate weapon of a catfish. It'd be like, when I feel hippie, it don't mean a thing. You ain't got that swing. Whoa, do up, do up, do up, do up. Do I, do I, do I. Honesty is the best policy. And I'm going to be honest. In my 30 some years of being on this earth, I am guilty of giving out whack penis. I know it's a few young ladies out here that wish they can get a refund in that package I was delivering. But this ain't Amazon, baby. This that buy here, pay here type situation. It was non-refundable. It be like that sometimes. Now I'm married, so I can't give you a refund. And I, I can't deliver another package. But I wanna say thank you for the learning experience. Because of you, my wife is a happy customer. Delivery be on time and the packages do not be damaged. Look how friendly he looks. We're besties. What the hell is that? Babe, can I keep him? No, you can't fucking keep him. Babe, he's drooling out of his fucking mouth. Whoa. That's the... Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Um, our relationship would be over. It's certain adventurous things that I can deal with, but this ain't one of them. You out here picking up wild animals, asking us to keep him? Yeah, I don't trust you. Wait, he said his fetish was curly hair and jokes on him because this is a wig. I have a mullet! I don't believe you. Take it off! Take it off. I mean, am I tripping? I thought she was still pretty. The wig adds some dynamic to their relationship. You feel what I'm saying? I feel as though we could do a little something with that. Well, mm, not not me, person. Not me, because I'm married. But I feel as though you and your man could do something with that. It's like he has two people. I'm not the type of person to come at people for their shortcomings. Let me rephrase that. It depends on your attitude. Because for me, attraction is one thing. But attitude is everything. You could throw the wig on today. We could role play. You could be my light skin Pam Grier. Tomorrow you could take the wig off. You could be my black Miley Cyrus. This all depends on your attitude. Because it's a lot of y'all out here with stink attitudes. And you run around talking about I'm a bad bitch. If the wig and the weave industry was to go on strike right now. You ain't coming outside. We ain't going to see you no more. I'm just being honest. If the makeup industry What's to go on strike right now? We ain't gonna see you no more. If you had to walk around here bare-faced it, who? Lord have mercy. You gonna be in the house like a vampire. I know it's about 25,000 of you guys that watch these videos that still haven't subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. Come on now, we almost at 100K, man. We almost at 100K. And follow me on the gram. Follow me on Instagram. Bro, what kind of final death? I'm really curious to know the age of the driver because there's no way a millennial was driving that van behind that truck. No way. 2003 really messed with our heads. Yep. Who remember Final Destination? Bro, 
that highway scene killed me. Final Destination has really made me listen to my gut instinct more. If I'm in a certain situation and I start having premonitions and my gut instinct tell me, yeah, this not good. This not going to end well. Or oh, I'm getting the fuck up out of this. Final Destination has really changed my life. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure it's, it has changed a lot of you guys' lives, too. So, I'm never traveling with this girl again. So, we didn't get to experience one thing. We were here for five days. And literally, she didn't pay for one drink, one thing of food, one activity. Nothing happened. But she wants to buy, like, a... What is this? What type of bag is this? She wants to buy, like, designer bags and designer glasses and stuff. But she didn't pay for one thing. The whole trip, but why would you not pay for one thing? And she stole my clothes. I'm just, I'm done. No, you should have never came out here. You should have never came. Why would you even come? Why would you even come? We didn't do anything. We did nothing. Okay, but how is that my fault? I reacted to a video last week asking, why is it that women can never remain friends? Prime example. Why would you go on the internet and expose your friend? Now, I'm not going to lie. I would feel some type of way if somebody decided to go on a trip with me and don't have any money, and now I have to pay for everything for them, that is kind of foul. But at the same time, as your friend, that is nobody else's business. I want you to understand something, ladies. It's certain things that you can't come back from. Exposing your friends, exposing people that you supposedly care about to complete strangers, these are things that you cannot come back from. I'm stealing in New York, five below, go wrong. All this stuff is ours. Yo, that's a dude. Bro, word to me, the first time I've seen this video, because I've seen this video before, I thought that was a female. That's crazy. I'll grab your piece for you. What are you doing? What are you doing? Kiara, pull up. Oh, Kiara, pull up. Pull up, Kiara. Am I not like that? Come on, you can't do this. I'm sorry. I'm a manager. You're not doing this in my store. You're not. Respectfully. Wait, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Um, um, sir, ma'am, you cannot tell Kiara to pull up and then say, am I not like that? Because if you was like that, Kiara would not need to pull up. Let's, come on now. You're contradicting yourself. Stealing from five below is diabolical behavior. But, um, sir, I'm gonna be real with you. Manager or not, five below does not pay you enough to put yourself in danger. I know when they do inventory and a lot of that shit come up missing, it's gonna look crazy. But, my brother, be careful. I want you to think about it this way, right? That lady could have a son, could have a nephew, could have a brother that would not appreciate the way you treated her, even though she was wrong. But they don't want to hear that. They don't care about that. They care about you disrespecting their family member. And now they come for your ass. And Five Below ain't going to have them goonies out there. And Kiara is definitely not going to pull up when some grown ass men come for your ass. So, pause. This goes out to everybody that work at these stores. These folks do not pay you enough to put yourself in danger. All right, if we could have your name and age and why you ended up popping. Hi, I'm Lex and I'm 23 and I have a couple different things. First of all, um, you have your glasses on and is, this is supposed to be a dating show yeah. and I feel like out of respect for us women, you should right. have your glasses off. I respect that. Um, second thing, uh, you said something about a uh, woman in peace, like your woman being your peace. Mm -hmm. You should be able to find your own peace and mm -hmm. the woman should be able to add to it, not yeah. her actually being your peace. I necessarily say like the woman was my peace. I'm saying I, I look for peace in a woman. Okay. So so a, a, when I'm looking at you, I don't want conflict. I don't want problems. Okay, um, cool. I, I want like something that somebody that's um looking to provide a solution. You know what I'm saying to whatever problem we have. Okay, so whether cool. it's whatever. And then as far as my glasses, they like sentimental. Um, I don't mind taking them off, like them you know, off. yeah, you know. Let's, let's see your face. You, if you if you there just want to ask, like, you know, <laughs> but they sentimental. Um, my dad got a piece of metal stuck in his eye. He always wore sunglasses and everything, so okay, I just cool. always wanted to be like my dad. So all just right, came cool. as myself. That's all. Right. I appreciate you. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. And now is she yep. someone that's your type? Would you approach her if you saw her out? Um, she she's definitely gorgeous. Um, you know for sure. But I probably you know what, and she seems like you know more of like a friend. Um, you know, somebody that'll probably be like a cool person to hang around. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. I don't want to just judge off of this 10 second clip, but at the same time, the whole peace thing that he's talking about, I don't feel as though that go for her. I feel as though she confrontational. <laughs> I feel as though by him saying that whole, I think a woman should be my peace or whatever she, she rebuttaled it to be, it might have struck a nerve when he said it. She's gorgeous. And she's 23. At 23, I don't feel as though a guy nor a woman has had enough unselfish experience to understand what peace means. At 23, I didn't understand that. At 23, I know for sure my wife did not understand that. She understands it now, you know, and it took years. I really feel as though she started grasping the concept of being a man's peace at 30. Or probably at 31. She didn't understand it before. And I don't blame her because I was moving selfishly as well. It's a lot of pressure being a man. You know, you have to provide. You have to protect. And that's just in your relationship. When you're outside in the world, you have to carry yourself in a way that nobody disrespects you. I feel as though men are closer to having that animalistic instinct of prey and predator. And you have to move accordingly. The way we move outside in the world, you never want anybody to look at you as a prey. You have to carry yourself in a way that it commands respect. Now, when you get in your household, you don't want to have to keep doing that. Of course, at the end of the day, you're going to be a man. But at the same time, whatever it is you had going on outside in the world, when you come in the house, you see a woman and you talk to your woman, you want all of that to disappear. You want the presence of your woman to ease the turmoil and the pressure of the outside world. And that's what he means by peace. If I can't come home to you and forget about what's going on in the outside world, then you're not for me.